All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lewis Glenz, president of Regis Technologies, and want to welcome you to this seminar. Um, we've had several seminars in Chicago, so it's like a series of seminars, and you can see them on our website. So we've had them on impurity evaluation, GMP trends, analytical development, and also drug master files. So this is just an extension of bringing this out into the field and uh, bringing a real quality speaker down to the Bay Area. Um, joining me today is Bill Lidster, who's our Western business development person, and, yeah, and Angie Thayer, who's back there, and uh, Angie's a project manager. So I wanted to give you just a quick overview of Regis. So this will be our, our commercial interruption at the beginning, and then we'll get on to a very productive seminar. So <clears throat> Regis was founded in 1956 by my father, and rather than read things out, I'd just say, really, our business is take things from the laboratory to kilo to process scale. And uh, from doing that, I have a lot of gray hairs on my head. You know, it's a challenging world. I was, I was joking last night at dinner with Neil that um, one time I came home and it was a Friday and we lost a batch and my mother-in-law asked what was wrong. I told her we lost a batch and it was probably $40,000. And she said, well, did you fire the guy? I go, well, no, we wouldn't have any chemists if <laughs> we fired him. <laughs> Her time a batch was lost. And there's always, save the mother liquor, there's always product in that. <laughs> So we, we have a lot of challenges, and that's, that's the excitement that we do of, of bringing our process knowledge to uh, your chemical issues. Uh, we also have a really great pharmaceutical services team, um, really good at developing analytical. Also, uh, in, we isolate impurities and, uh, and identify them that this is becoming a, a bigger part of our business. Uh, we have something for SFC separation services. Regis is well known for chiral separations. Uh, we're from Illinois, and we licensed Dr. Perkle's technology for uh, chiral columns, which has been a really nice business for us. Um, we'll even screen your molecule for free. So if you have a new molecule and you can spare 20 milligrams, send it to Regis, and uh, we'll give you a, a method for separating it, a scout method at least. Uh, and then we can also do preparative scale up to like a kilo or two. Um, Another thing we're very strong in is project management. Uh, Angie is one of our project managers here. Uh, we have three project managers. They're all uh, chemists. And the nice thing, they're the glue between the, the laboratory, who's, who's working hard at the chemistry, and the, the business person who's out in the field. So you have a project manager you can talk to. We'll be there for the conference calls, take notes, keep our chemists on track if something has to be sent, and uh, <coughs> make sure your, your project is ushered through nicely. Um, another thing, we have a real good regulatory team. We have uh, four commercial molecules, and two of them we've been rolling across the globe. So we've had interaction with regulatory agencies around the globe. Um, and this has been a, a pretty exciting time for us to uh, you know, work with the different agencies. We had Korean FDA in to visit, and a lot of times the European ones are released by a qualified person from Europe. Um, another thing with our regulatory, our last two FDA inspections had no 483s, so we, we have a great team making sure that we stay compliant. And now our, our, my last slide is our, our newest innovation is for potent compounds. Um, we noticed that maybe 20% of our projects were getting rejected because they were just too potent. Our EHS people said you can't work with them. So we said, what can we do? We brought SafeBridge in. They looked at our facility and said, boy, why don't you just go small but really get it done right. So we, we built out a place, uh, 22 liter flasks, uh, 500 gram output, in, <coughs> you know, depending on the reaction and such. But um, we'll be able to handle all the way up through the full SafeBridge 3 range. So we're kind of excited about that. Um, so that's the overview on Regis. And now I want to introduce Dr. Anderson. Uh, Neil Anderson spent 17 years at Bristol Myers Squibb and during that time scaled up four major drugs doing the process development, and also started up at least 12 process facilities. So he's very familiar with all of this. And then came out to the, the Bay Area after leaving BMS, but uh, horses brought uh, <laughs> Neil up to Oregon, where he, where he lives now. And you have three horses, four horses? We have three horses. Three horses. <laughs> so during this time, uh, Dr. Anderson's been running short courses, um, wrote a book, and there's a, a second edition that's back there that we'll be raffling off at the end of the talk. Uh, so let's welcome up Dr. Anderson. Thank you very much for the introduction. Nice to see you folks, and nice to see some folks that I've seen earlier, and uh, nice to see you again. So 
Uh, thank you for taking the time out this morning to uh, spend a little bit of time to consider some different aspects of process development. And I want to talk about some highlights here, <coughs> excuse me, that should help with your process development in the future. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, how do you decide how to approach a particular problem? Um, how, if you go to someone like Regis and say, we need you to make something, it depends a lot on the purpose, how much needs to get made, and by when. And also, as Lou mentioned, the, uh, how your, uh, the potency of the compound uh, has a lot to do with how you can physically handle the material. So a slide here, table, um, fair amount of detail, but I think you can, uh, this, this makes sense if you look at it from the standpoint of as you go down here, you require more and more material in order to accomplish what you need to. Um, if you're making a reference standard, however you make it is fine. Purified by chromatography, SFC, whatever you need to, to get the material made. And uh, this, the reference standard may be just an impurity. Perhaps it is the definitive um, structural proof for your API. However you make it is, is fine. Uh, if you're making material for a tox batch, then what you're doing, of course, is qualifying the impurities. And you need to make sure that everything is consistent for when it does go into humans. You're probably going to make these under good laboratory practice, GLP conditions. You could make it under GMP conditions if you wanted, because sometimes people prepare material for the tox batch and phase one studies in one shot. So in that case, you'd be making things under GMP conditions. Uh, Phase one, you're concerned about safety. Phase two, efficacy. Phase three, the side effects. And then when you get to commercial manufacturing, of course, you want to make it on a large scale, make it efficiently, and still control the impurities. So that's why I put down here, goal being to control impurities. Now, you could also look at it and say, well, I want to make, I want to make the material, I want to make the goods, but it has to be made um, to control the impurities first, so you can put it into humans. Um, and at the same time, you want it to be cost effective. You want it to be productive, and you want, by this time in your operations, you want to have the optimal final form. So, some basic principles of process development to begin with. Um, the first one is safety. It's no accident that safety is at the beginning of the list because you have to make sure that operations are safe for those people who are running the processes themselves. And uh, this, because you can affect so many people, accidents affect not only the people who are running the processes, but the uh, laboratory, the equipment, the, um, could be the, uh, the town itself, if it really goes bad, isn't Bhopal? Um, everything has to be considered in the first standpoint of safety. And secondly, safety is imperative from the standpoint of how, um, how you can allow for compounds to go into humans because you have to match the impurity profile. So, of course, you want to minimize the impurities that are present so you can optimize, maximize your yields. So impurities drive what we do to a very great extent. And correspondingly, we have to be very much aware of the um, input that we can get from the analytical chemists in order to do this. Rapid commercialization requires efficient process development. And this is, has to be a teamwork between the process chemists, the chemical engineers, the analysts, the regulatory folks, toxicologists, um, and others. So it very much has to be a, a collaborative effort. Some rules of thumb for how we approach things in process development. For safety, we have to control the release of energy and gases. Water. Thank you. And 
And this is, this is really paramount. If we don't understand how the gases are being released, we may well wind up with incidents, okay, uh, as they're called. Um, explosions, um, ruined equipment. It's, we don't want to go there. In batch operations, uh, the nice rule of thumb is that if you have an exothermic event, you want to operate about 100 degrees below the temperature at which you have that exothermic event. Safety uh, hazard analyses are extremely important for scale-up. If you can't operate 100 degrees below, maybe 50 degrees below that critical temperature, but you want to know where that temperature is and control things, and it's a bigger deal with batch operations than it is with continuous operations. Uh, this was discussed really nicely in the paper by Butters. It uh, goes back a number of years, but it's really an excellent review article if you haven't run across this. And they talked about a number of things. This article was written by a consortium of process development chemists from the UK. It's really quite brilliant. Um, so in batch operations, if you're controlling the temperature, we wind up using dose-controlled additions. You're well, well familiar with them, extremely important. Uh, most of the scale-up problems that we run into deal with either heat transfer, temperature control, or mass transfer, mixing. So these are the things that we're always very concerned about, and this is why I loved working with chemical engineers because those are the people who really had the direct, um, simple approaches to solving the problems that I would run into. Another rule of thumb, you guys are well familiar with this from uh, college and high school chemistry classes, right? You raise the temperature of your reaction by 10 degrees and you double the reaction rate. Um, that's a nice rule of thumb. It goes back to the Arrhenius equation, and yet this is, this is true depending on the energy of activation of your reaction itself. It may quadruple if you raise it 10 degrees. It depends on the energy of activation. And the last bullet here, if you scale up by a factor of 10, you will basically double the amount of time it takes to do your processing on scale. Now, this has a lot to do with geometry of your vessels and heat transfer. And again, we're talking batch reactions here. But it turns out that that's pretty much a good rule of thumb. Uh, whether you're going from 10 grams to 100 grams or from 10 kilos to 100 kilos, you're going to basically double your processing time. So you're well advised in, under those circumstances then to go through the drill of uh, extending your operations in the laboratory in order to be sure that when you actually do scale up that things will run the way you expect them to.